Hello there. This is the family doctor. How do you do, Dr. Adams yeah. and Mrs. Adams? How do you Maybe. do? <laughs> well, won't you come in? Well, thank you. Come in, Grant. I suppose you want to see Mr. Maynard, don't you, Doctor? Well, yes, if he isn't too busy. Oh, no, of course not. He's in his study, as usual. Oh, Glenn. Oh, I thought I heard the doorbell. Good afternoon, Grant, and greetings to you, too, Mrs. Adams. Uh, afternoon, Glenn. You aren't too busy to talk to Dr. Adams, are you, Glenn? Oh, certainly not. I'm never too busy to see a busy man. <laughs> well, all right, then. Suppose you two men go into your study, Glenn, and we ladies will retire to the parlor. All right. <laughs> Come on, Grant. Let's leave the ladies to their gossip. Well, wasn't that a lovely luncheon that Mrs. Little gave? Sit down. Thank you. You don't mind if I just finish a couple of more lines with this letter, do you? Oh, of course not. Go right ahead. It won't take me long. Hmm. No. I uh, was just writing to an old professor of mine who uh, just retired after 25 years teaching in the same seminary. We used to think he was old when I was there. Just think, Grant, 35 years of service. Wonderful, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Hope I shall be privileged to serve that long. Well, uh, why is he retiring, the professor, I mean? He's just old, Grant, that's all, just old. He just can't go on. Believe me, he would go on if he were able. Mm -hmm. You know, Glenn, you preachers, uh, well, you, you all seem to know. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Come on, man. Out with it. What's on your mind? Hmm? Well, I've heard of ministers receiving what they what they termed a call to go to another church. Yes? What does that mean? What is a call? Well, I don't know exactly, Grant. All I know is that we seem to recognize it when it comes. Oh, I don't want you to think there's anything mysterious about receiving a call. Now, when the Cedarton Union Church Board of Elders wrote me and asked me to accept the pastorship of this church, Virginia and I talked it over. We prayed, thought about it. Then one day I said to Virginia, My dear, I believe in my heart we should go to Cedarton. She agreed with me wholeheartedly, and we accepted the call. But what was it that convinced you that you should resign from your former church... And come to Cedarton. Oh, I don't know, Grant. I was wrong when I said there isn't anything mysterious about receiving a call. There is. We so often come to a fork in the road of life. And more often than not, the choice of one path or the other is easy. But when a man comes to that difficult moment in his life, when one path means the apparent complete throwing over of all he's built up in the past, and the other means a new and untried and perhaps discouraging highway toward an unknown destination... The answer to the question, where shall I go, can only be found in the heart. Mm, yes. Well, will I... Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, do you have to wait until the answer is in your heart, uh, seems absolutely sure, before you take a step one way or the other? We're never sure, Grant. We can only follow the dictates of our own heart toward the direction which we feel deep down is right. Mm, yes. Yes? What's on your mind, Grant? Hmm? 
Oh, me? Oh, nothing, nothing. I see. I'm your pastor. You know Grant Adams. Yes, 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 I know. You haven't anything you want to talk over with me? No. No, I guess I'll just have to work it out for myself. Mm. I understand. Well, what do you say we join the ladies and have a cup of tea with them? Tea? Oh, of course, surely. Come along. They're lovely dreams. Well, I'm glad you think that's so nice. Oh, here are the men. Come in. Will you have a cup of tea? Yes, dear, I think we shall. Sit down, Grant. Well, Mrs. Adams, uh, what do you hear from the city? From, uh, the city? Uh, yes, I, I mean from your son and daughter-in-law. Oh, oh, from Grant Jr., well, he's just doing very well. That's fine. Uh, by the way, I haven't seen Dr. Adams in church for the last few Sundays. Well, no. He, he's he been so busy. <laughs> of course, I understand. Uh, try to get out to service this coming Sunday morning, uh, will you, Grant? Uh, yes. Yes, Glenn? I'll be there. Good. Good. as Paul met at Damascus when the voice said unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Paul's problem there on that lonely road was solved for him by the miracle of that heavenly voice. If he were to do right, he had but one choice. Neither, my friends, is it the problem of the young man or woman facing the world for the first time. They step from the sheltering, ivy-clad walls of college or university, guided by wiser, older, more experienced minds. But when the problem faces a man or woman in middle life or even later, when the question arises, shall I remain among my old friends, serving them as I have served them these long years, or shall I take up my belongings in my family and move on toward other fields? Then, friends, the problem weighs heavily upon the human heart. It is not, as I say, a question of which is right or wrong. It is rather a question of which is more right, this path or that. St. Luke records the last few words of the Lord to his disciples. Go ye unto all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Some of those remaining eleven went far afield, to Rome, to Thessalonia, to Corinth, and some, yes, some remained in the Holy Land. What was it that guided those few into foreign lands? And what was it that pressed others to remain in Palestine? Shall I tell you what it was? Oh, my friends, if you're ever faced with such a problem, there is only one light by which you will be enabled to read the answer in your own heart. And that is the golden light of service. The golden light of service. Service to your fellow men. Service to your God. The answer will come, friends. It will come just as it came to the man in the parable, which was our scripture reading today. Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, if there be any in thy house this Sabbath day who stand facing the dividing forks in the pathway of life, we beseech thee, guide them along the road to a greater service in thy name, that they may hear at the end of life's journey the consoling words from thy lips. Well done, good and faithful servant. Amen. Amen. And now... The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below.
Honey, is there any question in your heart now? No, Grant, there isn't. Shall we, shall we go and tell Reverend Maynard what he's done for us today? Oh, yes, Grant, let's. Come along, then. Thank you. Hope to see you at prayer meeting Thursday. Well, Bill Benson, you're quite a stranger here. <laughs> yes, Reverend, I don't get a chance to get out very often. I always come when I can, though. Oh, I'm sure you do. Come to the men's club Wednesday, Bill. Well, I'll try. Thank you. Well, Grant, Mrs. Adams. Well, I, I wonder... I wonder if we could talk with you for just a minute or two, Glenn. Why, of course. Come into the study right here. Ah. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. Well, folks. Glenn, you know Mrs. Forrest, the mother of the boy who was hurt a couple of weeks ago in that automobile accident? Yes, yes, of course. She's from New York, I understand. Yes. Well, last week she came to Lou and me with an offer for me to take a position as head of the children's clinic in the David and Jonathan Hospital in New York City. Oh. And all this week, that problem has been on our minds and hearts. We've had to decide whether or not to leave Cedarton and all our old friends and go to New York. We promised Mrs. Forrest to give her our answer this afternoon. And, Glenn, you don't know it, but you've just given us that answer. And that is? Well... We've decided that, well, well, we're going to... I I guess I'll have to say it, Grant. Yes, honey, I I guess you will. Mr. Maynard, uh, Dr. Adams and I are going to New York. Well, you were wrong, Grant. Hmm? I did know of your problem. You did? Why, well, I never... Yes, I knew it even before you did. Mrs. Forrest came to me when she first arrived, talked it all over with me. She asked me what I thought the folks of our town would say to her taking their family doctor away from them. Of course, there's only one answer to that. But I told her I felt that she and her hospital were opening up a new life of service to Grant Adams, M.D., and his good wife. Well, what do you know about that? You're going on, Grant. On to a greater ministry. And God bless you. This is the family doctor. I'll be in to see you again right soon. Goodbye. <laughs> 